Do we have audio for both? So of course I'm armed. Did I use it? No, because I'm also not a criminal. But I'm absolutely going to stand up against these fascist pieces of shit and the bullshit that they're trying to pull. Yeah. Two way all the way. Kamala was not an elected official. All right, my name is Julian Haynes. We're with the front page student newspaper. We're here at a Trump rally in Aurora. Um, there are a lot of people here. We don't know if we're going to be able to get access or not, but we will see some stuff. Some human beings lined up to see the former president, Donald Trump. You dig? Somehow we made it in. They're the enemy of the people. They're really New York Times is the enemy. Washington Post is the enemy of the people. and bloodthirsty criminals in jail or take them out of our country. I will rescue Aurora and every town that has been invaded and conquered. <laughs> yeah. Quick disclaimer before we start. We at the front page are nonpartisan and we wanted to cover the event similarly as nonpartisan, especially with an event as polarizing as this one. So yeah, we're just trying to talk to people. We're not trying to make fun of anybody. Please enjoy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm representing my city. I live and work in Aurora. I teach. And I'm just a little upset about how much Trump is lying about my neighbor. Yeah, yeah. And my students. And our city. Our city and is our not city. a war zone. It's not a war zone. We live here. We love Aurora. Yeah, yeah. This is my most important message. Well, this should be mine. No. They believe, they believe him. His lies. Because they fear people that don't look like them, to be honest. And we have to live with these animals. But we're not going to live with them for long. You watch. You think so? Yes, because if they were working in the classroom every day like I was, working with immigrants, they wouldn't feel this way about the people. Yeah. So. You know, we're pretty sure that immigrants work at this hotel. Probably doing the cleaning, yep. probably doing the dishes. I'm pretty they sure probably that built, this built this hotel. We've had immigrants in Aurora says, for a long time. I think you can be a Trump supporter and not be a racist, to be fair. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> but it's ignorance. Oh, it is ignorance. <laughs> if they're supporting Trump, I think that they're missing a lot of information. There you go. That's okay. another way to say it. I wish Misinformed. You they're not necessarily Trump! ignorant because I know there's doctors that support Trump. Trump. And they've also told us not to get vaccines. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going you, guys. you guys see all these people here? There's, there's a Did lot you guys of people. Expect here. This turn up? I don't know what I expected. I, I know these have been pretty big, but uh, yeah. Yeah. People showed up. Thousands of people lined up all the way around the block through this neighborhood. I would say, I, I think the capacity inside is 10,000. I like uh, my uh, closed border and uh, protection of Second Amendment and also the protection of the unborn are uh, really important. What's up? Right. What are you doing? Hello. My name is Jeremiah Medina. Um, I'm mainly here to. Uh, to stand against abortion, uh, I believe it's mass genocide. It's the exercising of of uh, eugenics, and they're trying to they're trying to eliminate eliminate the working class and the lower working man. And I'm just I stand against it. Every life has has the right to live, and the right to thrive, and the right to go to heaven. Um, and that's what I believe in. All right. Yes, All sir. Right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So, uh, what are you doing here today? Uh, seeing my buddy right here. Yeah. I gotta walk walk in with him. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming you're voting for Trump. Oh, absolutely. And uh, why? Uh, well, for me personally, it's the whole entire um, 
just the market, everything is just up. I've always loved Trump my whole entire life and just what he can do with our uh, economy and all that. It just, okay. that, that's where I'm at with him. He's a business person and he just does the right thing for everybody. Where are you from? Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs, so yep. you traveled up for this? Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. All right. I've traveled a lot of different places for Trump and 100%. Yeah, what do you think of Kamala? The, the biggest problem with her is nobody knew who the hell she was. Just say, who, who's running? Harris. Harris, who the hell is Harris? Uh, I have nothing negative to say. I just like Trump better. Understood. Yep, nothing right. negative to say. I just, I prefer Trump. And I study both sides, so I like that, but I don't like people that, you know, dog on the other side. So I have nothing negative to say, but I prefer Trump 100%. All right, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Guys, you. Have a good one. You too. You must like communism too. All right, what are you doing here today? Uh, I'm here to share my feelings about my neighborhood. I live three blocks away from the apartment building that Trump is lying about. Are you, are you going in? God, no. So, I'm here to stand here for eight hours. Stand at this spot? This spot. Um, well, I just, you know, I've heard out there that Aurora is like a war zone. You look at Aurora in Colorado. They are taking over the towns. They're taking over buildings. They're going in violently. These are the people that she and Biden led into our country, and they're destroying our country. I live in Aurora. I haven't seen a war zone yet. I'm like down on Colfax, like a lot. I actually work down there. Um, I think it hurts us, that kind of language. Uh, and, you know, I just wanted to stay like, I live here and I think it's beautiful. Okay, and, and you just want to hold your sign and then let other people know that as well? Yep, anybody who asks. It's my sixth rally. Yeah? So, yeah, I flew, uh, I'm from Minnesota originally, so I flew home uh, with a torn tendon to go see him. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. No, it was, uh, um, so he came to my hometown and I'm like, well, why not go back home for the weekend? Sure, yeah. So, yeah. Is this so, your hometown? Uh, Thornton. Thornton? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you went home to see another Trump rally. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was uh, it was a good time. It's always a good party. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, there's, I don't even know how many people are here today. Yeah. What, what's, what's, what's uh, the, the draw of the Trump rally? Is it just having a lot uh, of yeah, like-minded people? Uh, yeah, all the people, a lot, a lot of people that have the same uh, thoughts on what uh, what uh, we want to happen with the country that I do. Uh, Trump does as well. Um, the uh, just being able to talk to everybody. No, I was in the bathroom with her. And then, uh, what is this? Yeah, sorry about that. I was here in line. No, I guess uh, everything that Trump's been talking about since 2015 is uh, things that I've I've been wanting somebody to say, politician or not, uh, since I've been paying attention to politics. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, no, it's uh, just I I want I want somebody to just think logically, like uh, like Trump does, and he's not perfect, but to uh, uh, to do something better for our economy with uh, uh, with a good logic. Uh, and uh, something that is not just based on what the establishment wants or uh, whatever the, the global government consensus. How long have you guys uh, been waiting? Um, three hours. Wow. Yeah, three hours. We got here at eight. We left the house at six. Traffic was insane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was total road lock. So again, a good, good problem to have. Yeah. We're almost there. So uh, why you guys come today? To cheer on our next president. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yes. We've got to, we've got to have a change in our um, leadership. We've got to close our borders. The crime in our communities is out of control. I have four kids. Our groceries are, and we're a, a middle to middle upper class family, and we're have it's tough to even get groceries on the table. So we yeah. need to have a lot of changes. You look like you are. That's very sweet of you. Do you think it win? Yes. I sure hope so, or our country will If America change. is smart. Any other reasons you're voting for him? We need less crime, which means less illegals crossing the border. We need safer streets. Colorado's number one for auto theft. Colorado's number one for house break-ins. We need a safe environment. 
and the economy is very important and world politics we don't need her at the helm right so trump trump can take care of world politics and all the hot spots in the world too so let's go trump what are you doing here today protecting my children's freedoms protecting them you know i did not bring my children into the world for this shit show yeah. Yeah. Is, that, is that your primary issue is, is the abortion uh no the fact that i'm a human being um, that immigrants are human beings that everybody's a human being on this planet trying to survive and the rich are trying to extract our wealth and when is everybody going to wake up and realize that that's what they're trying to do yeah what do you think will happen if Trump gets elected? Um, the, that, um, well, my, if you haven't noticed, Mother Nature's angry. She directed that at, uh, at the East Coast, and she's going to hit the, this Colorado hard this winter. And it's basically a climate crisis. It's not a cli you know, it's not a problem until it hits your doorstep. And so. It's going to speed up the fact that the human race, the human race is going to go extinct. It is because of Trump and people like him. And um, if if Kamala wins, we might have a slight chance of correcting the course. But white supremacy has to die. And in order for to do that, I don't want fucking Harris to be elected either. But it is the lesser of two evils right now. It is. White supremacy has to die. Why don't you want her to be elected? She's funding the genocide too. They're all funding the genocide. They're all getting rich off the genocide. And it's not just the genocide in in uh, in uh, Palestine. It's the genocide that's been going on in America. And most people don't realize there's a genocide going on in America right now. Yeah, what, what's that? School shootings, the American healthcare system, the prison system, being a minority, being a Native American. Take your pick. Anybody that's not white. Okay, yeah. Anything else you want to share? Um, I have hope for the future. Okay. <laughs> I have hope for the future. You do? Why do you have hope? Um, because I didn't bring my children into the world for this shit show. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. You have to have hope and faith. You do. Okay, I appreciate your time. Thank you for telling me. Thank you. Where everybody go? I believe this one. I, I, I like socialism on paper. Like uh, here to see uh, Trump. Okay, you're voting for him? Yes, we are. And uh, why? Uh, because this country's a mess. Uh, I think uh, if uh, the Democrats get in there, they're going to uh, stack the Supreme Court. I think they're going to make a state out of Puerto Rico and uh, uh, maybe Washington, D.C. If they do that, they're going to get some extra senators. And at that point, they could take control, total control of Congress. Uh, and that'll be, uh, that'll be into the uh, Republican Party. All right. What are you doing here today? Um, my friend and I, Jan, we came down here because we knew that we wanted uh, we believe that if Trump is elected, our Constitution is at risk. Okay. And we believe if Trump is elected, um, there's more than the Constitution that will be at risk. But the Constitution's really important. You, you can't, you sh we can't mess with it. It's, we love our Constitution. Okay. And if I could just say, Trump is getting crazier and crazier. He's... He's not even making sense anymore. Yeah. You know, talking about windmills and sharks and, well, you know, that's, <laughs> that was a while ago, but lately he's not making any sense. Okay. And yeah. I'm worried that he's too old to lead the country and too... You're too mean. He's too, too mean. mean. <laughs> I, I lost the word. What word do I want? He, he, doesn't, he doesn't care about anyone but himself. That's true. Yeah. So, no one but him. Why are you guys uh, showing your support here today? Uh, because we know that Trumpers think no one here, no one is, is on the side of Harris, and we are. We're on the side of Harris. It's me again. Just wanted to interject. The next part of the video is exclusively talking about the Aurora gang. Let's be honest. That's why Trump was. That's why he came to Aurora. I mean, come on. Um, so yeah, we talked exclusively about that and immigration in the next part. I think I said that early in the video, but this next part is the part about Aurora. This next part is about Aurora. Good 
you're from around this area. Um, what's your take on the Aurora gangs? Um, I think there's a lot of gangs around um, already. A lot of them we don't see probably. And then uh, we saw some on video that was pretty, uh, it was pretty out in the open. Uh, so I don't want that to continue. I want it to stop and I want somebody to be for, um, uh, for uh, enforcing our laws. Um, you know, Harris says that she's, uh, she, she was uh, in the, um, uh, she was a DA, right? But I don't think that she's acting on uh, our laws right now. And I don't think she's going to like Trump is gonna do. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah. yeah, anything else you wanted to share? Uh, no, I think, uh, well, just basically, I think uh, Trump is more what we need for the time in our, our country. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, what Trump has set up uh, so that we can continue to have the conversation uh, that we can uh, uh, we can do better for all Americans in reality versus what Harris just says. She doesn't give any actual roadmap. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Where are you guys from? Denver, Colorado. So uh, what do you guys think about the Aurora gangs? That is very it's scary. It's absolutely awful that some illegal people can come in and take over buildings. It, your home is a place that you should be be comfortable and happy. And those gangs just destroyed it for every single person that lived in that um, apartment building, as well as I would assume the entire community. Community, how unsettling! It's absolutely a disgrace that our country has come to this. Yeah, and you think Trump will help with the border? Absolutely, absolutely. He already, I, I, he already has a whole deportation plan in place that will go into effect day one. They'll and a majority, a, a majority of, a majority of Americans, regardless of Republican or Democrat, absolutely believe in deportation, and it's got to happen and happen quickly. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Goodbye. What are you guys doing here today? Yeah, we're here to protest Donald Trump's visit um, to Aurora. Um, specifically um, to draw attention to the fact that like everything he's been spewing about immigrant people is absolutely false, especially the narratives here in Aurora, it's absolutely false. Um, they're using immigrants to scapegoat uh, a slumlord property owner, right? Um, and he's been spewing all types of other awful racist things about immigrants across the country. So it's important that we're out here to reclaim the narrative and you know reclaim our streets because uh, we have lots of immigrants that are our neighbors, right? Um, and our coworkers and our friends, and they all are welcome here, um, and they all deserve the same things that we uh, that we want, right? We also, people, workers born in the United States, we also want housing, healthcare, education, right? We're fighting for the same thing. Our fight is their fight. Are you from here? I am, yeah. I'm from Denver, and I live in Aurora. So how does it make you feel uh, when Donald Trump talks about the gangs the way he does? Um, it, it enrages me, right? Um, because first of all, it's just flat out not true, right? I live like just around the corner from one of the buildings. Um, that has been going viral, right? And I know a lot of the people that live there and their families and their people that work from sunup to sundown. Um, they're really good people and this sort of rhetoric, like it's not just something that goes viral on the internet. It also inspires like right wing vigilantes to go to these buildings and then people get death threats and they feel really unsafe. So on top of, you know, struggling, being an immigrant, right? Maybe not being paid well, they work from sun up to sundown um, and then they have to come home and like deal with like right wing vigilantes. And it's, it's awful, right? And the threat of, of being evicted because uh, one of these buildings has already been closed down. Um, and, and it's sort of like the slumlord is getting away with things because of the racist rhetoric that Danielle Jurinsky and Donald Trump and so many more right-wing um, folks personalities have been spewing. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think is going to win the presidency? Um, I don't think that's like actually a very important question. I think um, what's important is like what are people doing to build an independent working class movement? Uh, because the truth is like both of these candidates, um, like they battle each other over like who loves Israel more, right? As Israel can, commits genocide, as Israel bombs Lebanon, right? Kills children in Lebanon. On. We have two presidential candidates that are battling over who loves Israel more, right? And that they're just so disconnected from the people. Um, and so what I hope is that people come together, um, they see this, this presidential election, um, and they realize, like, I'm not represented by either one of the major parties. And and they join a working class independent movement. Okay. Are you planning to vote? Um, I will vote. I will vote for Claudia and Karina. I will write them in on the ballot. They're the social, like, socialist candidates. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank you so much for Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Doesn't mean everybody gets oh, okay. What are you guys' uh, stance on the border? I think we need to secure our border. There's no doubt about that. 
true, but I, I don't think we really need to build a wall. I think that she, Kamala has a plan to, and like Kelly said, the plan was shot down by Trump because he wants to be the one that's the hero or something. But we, we do need to control our borders. We, we had, there were, sorry, no, there were, um, there were, she was going to add more uh, jobs for the border control people, right? And he knocked it down, so. Yeah, okay. Yep, and the other thing is that um, he, when he called all his friends to shoot down the bill, he told them it was because he can't get elected, if he wouldn't get elected if that bill passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Are you guys from around here? Yes. I live in Aurora, she lives in Boulder. Okay, and uh, what's your stance on the, on the gangs? I think it's a bunch of baloney. Okay. I, I live in Aurora. My kid goes to high school in Aurora. Uh, I am not worried about her walking to and from her high school every day. Uh, we don't live in the fancy part of Aurora. We live in the normal part of Aurora. Uh, it. I just think it's a bunch of baloney. There's there. There's whatever. It's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's All right. just a bunch of stuff that's been blown way out of proportion. That was It was like an arrest that went viral for a weird, like, not important thing. Oh, they're clapping for me. They're so happy. <laughs> okay, well, I appreciate you guys' this time. Thank you very much. What do you think about the gangs? I have no, I have not heard anything about gangs until he said Venezuelan gangs are taking over Aurora, it's not even true. He's a liar. Do you think that's why he's here? Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you see the Venezuelan gangs around here? I haven't seen any personally, no. No, me neither. <laughs> it's not true. Like Jan said, he's a liar. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank and you, guys. A liar and a felon. And a yeah. rapist. And, I, and I'm not voting for a criminal. <laughs> right. Um, I think we want to... Uh, uh, know who's coming in. Uh, I don't think that we or any other country want criminals coming in that we know or don't know. Uh, there's known criminals that we have coming into our country. So, um, and uh, that's just the ones we know about. Yeah. Uh, so we can't have fully open borders. Station, and then I pulled up. And there's a pickup truck, right? Uh, there was this pickup truck up at the gas station. Can I clip it on? Can I have like a full on interview? Five minutes. He's good. We're good. Yeah. Oh, want to start good? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Right. Sorry. So yesterday I was going to get gas up the street here, and I pulled in, and this gentleman was in a pickup truck, and I pulled up, and he started saying something. I got a loud stereo, so I turned it down, and he goes, oh, we got to get Trump into office. He needs to be our president. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And he goes, I'm an illegal, and I want Trump as president. <laughs> and I said, okay. And he said, no, I'm going to go back home and come back legally. I said, right on, man. You're doing it the right way, and I appreciate that. And then today was a great day. I had a good time inside there. And everybody was cordial and fine. And I came out here and crossed the street. Some guy started, wanted to start a fight with me. And I asked him why. And then someone tried to grab my wallet and steal it. They put it on the chain. And they were right there. They can, saw can you show it. us? Right there. You want to show oh, us the chain? Yeah. yeah, look at the chain. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. They, right. He was there. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous, dude. Yeah. They, they did it to you because you, they ain't going to do it to me. No. Now they won't. Yeah. Because I, I had to come all the way back here. Yeah, they kept playing games. And that's the exact reason why I'm armed. Is because I know that none of these Trump supporters are going to hurt us. I know none of these cops are going to hurt us. But I know the Democrats are violent. We've seen it and we know it. And we are tired of dealing with it. I'm not going to be a victim. So of course I'm armed. Did I use city? it? No. Because I'm also not a criminal. No. But I'm absolutely going to stand up against these fascist oh. pieces of shit and the bullshit that they're trying to pull. 2A. Yeah. 2A all the way. Kamala was Without, not an elected official. She no. was not elected as president, as uh, the candidate for the Democrats. She is not a representative of democracy, even though we're a republic. But these people are so brainwashed that they just follow along. And it's ridiculous to watch it happen over and over and over again. But you know what? They got a piece of my mind. And as much as they try to act like they're big tough guys and they want to tell you that they're going to do this and do that, I walked through that whole fucking crowd back and forth, said all kinds of things to almost every single person there. I said something to them offensive or in a way that was deriding and was going to make them mad. And not a single one of them did a single thing because they know damn well that when it comes down to it, they are all talk. Freedom ain't afraid of violence, but cowards are cowards that want to try to talk a big game 
try to fucking arrest the president, try to put him in jail, try to take his his uh, businesses, tried to kill him eventually when none of that worked. And now they finally got a piece of my mind at least. And I'm sure, you know, hundreds of other people. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that they even came out here. They call themselves the Socialist Party of America. They are national socialists. They are the new national socialists. They they hide it real well, but fascism is not an all right and an alt right thing. It's not a far right concept. Fascism is the idea of a authoritarian, oppressive control, a focus on racism, which they hate white males, a focus on the idea of of uh, degrading the nuclear family, a focus on the idea of suppressing speech. The guy was telling me over there he's going to punch me in my face for calling him the F word. I call him the F word because he looked like he wanted to punch me in the face. So I called it. I knew exactly what their plan was. Their plan was to be violent. And I called them in their face, and what did they do? They backed down because they realized there was going to be real-world consequences to their violence. And there will continue to be real-world consequences to their violence. They are no longer going to be out here attacking these cities. They are no longer going to be out here destroying our town halls, destroying people's businesses. We're not going to allow it. That shit is over with. Antifa is a fascist organization. They project onto others what they actually do. Let me say one thing. Go for it. So... You notice that we don't cover our faces. I was asking those people, why are you covering our face? Because I don't want my work to know. Yeah, exactly. I said, I'm proud to let people know. Because they called in sick. Yeah, (laughs) and and they don't want them to know that they're supporting terrorists. You know, and I'm a supporter of, just so it's clear, I'm a supporter of Gaza. I'm a supporter of Palestine. I am, I am appalled at what is going on there. I do not want a single American dollar to be spent in other countries. We have way too much infrastructure problems here yep. for us to be giving money away to countries that absolutely can handle oh, themselves. And if they can't, then they should probably stop antagonizing everybody. Yep. And if they're antagonizing everybody to the point that they want to you know, attack them, then there's a problem there. And it's not the United States' problem. And they keep making it ours. So all these people that say, Oh, well, you all, every single Trump supporter supports Israel. Absolutely not. There's tons of us Trump supporters that understand that what's happening over there is a humanitarian nightmare. There's tons of Trump supporters that are atheists like me that do not put some silly religious idealism behind why I believe in freedom. We exist, there's millions of us out here, and we do not fit in these little stereotypes that these cowards try to put us in. So they're going to take my car if I don't get out of here. Personally, like, do you feel personally like stereotyped? I don't first. Well, yes, I do because I'm Mexican. I'm I'm, uh, half Mexican, half American, right? So my father came from Mexico. My grandmother's from Mexico. So I get stereotyped all the time. Every time I say my name, which I'm not going to say right now because I don't want these POSs to catch me. But every time I say my name, they try to degrade me and treat me like I'm some second class citizen because I voted for Trump and I'm Hispanic. Not understanding that we are fiscal conservatives. Hispanics all the way down to South America are fiscal conservatives and social conservatives. They're Christians and they have um, the same exact values that we do here in America when it comes to their social values. The problem is they get co-opted and manipulated by Democrats who lie to them, who promise them the world, and they can't provide it. They obviously can't provide it because they don't even know what they're doing. I've sat in front of city council boards and watched them flub through stuff so much and it's ridiculous. They want the power, but they're not willing to put in the time to understand what's happening. They don't understand the demographics. They don't understand what's happening in our, st- in our cities with these That's immigrants cool. that are coming in. They're not even immigrants because I'm pro-immigrant. I'm a, my family is immigrants. So these are people, our invaders. They're coming here through the back door. My grandmother walked through the front door. She signed on the dotted line. My father walked through the front door, signed on the dotted line, took the oath just like every single one of us. And those people come through the back door. They don't take any oaths. They're not here to support Americans. They're here to try to demonize us. And Mexicanos como yo, we're not playing that. I speak Spanish fluently. You you had guys in there that were trying to talk to Hispanics in Spanish, thinking that like that is the most patronizing shit in the world. You see a guy that's brown, so you start talking to him in Spanish, thinking that you're going to convince him to not be a Trumper. Nosotros habla español también, pendejo. You're not going to do it. Like we're going to laugh at you. We're going to tell you off. And that's exactly what happened here today. It was the best thing. I live in a rural community. I never get to see this stuff. I wasn't able to get inside to see Trump. Devastated by that. But that's okay, because I got these people to understand that they are fucking up, and we're not taking it anymore. How's the experience yeah, today? Can we have your uh, first name? Carlos. Carlos. Well, he doesn't want his name, right? That's I, fine. Is Carlos okay? You, you guys, it's fine. No, it's fine for you guys. I just wasn't going to give it to them. They're, 
their reporters. Yeah, that's because one of their reporters back there, they're trying to come where you live, where you work. They want to see you up. I run my own business, so I can care less. But they do, they want to screw you up. So I'm real careful who I tell my name to. Now, yeah, Facebook. Yeah. But yeah, how, how, how was the experience inside today? I didn't get to go inside. In fact, I knew I wasn't going to get to go inside, so I didn't even waste my time trying to walk into the line. What I did was I held these people to account all day long. Got you. Yeah, yeah. That was, that, was the, that was my goal here today, was to hold these people to account and to let them know we're not here to have conversations with you because we know that you're disingenuous. We know that anything that we say to you, you're going to figure out some way to try to twist it and lie. So we're not here to have those conversations. We're just here to deride you and make fun of you and have fun with it because that's what they do. Right. And they I'm tired of us not taking oh, I'm sorry, I'm tired of us always taking the high road. I'm tired of it because that does not get results. So we're going to get some results. So I went out there and I got some results today. I got them in my face. One of these guys ended up having to get taken out of there because he couldn't handle free speech. It's the thing that they hate the most. They hate it. They hate the idea of free speech. You know, yeah, it's questions. crazy. I was just going to ask, are you local to the area? Yes. Are you from Aurora? Not Aurora, but I'm from Colorado. Colorado, yeah. okay. I live in the mountains. How do you feel about the gangs? So that's a big overstatement, honestly. There's not as much of a gang problem here as they say there is. Obviously, there is gangs here because anytime you have immigrants that move into a community, you're going to have individuals who decide to get together and do criminal activity, right? And that's just part of it, organized crime. So in reality, though, the problem is in places like Silverthorne. If you drive to Silverthorne and you go into the Walmart there, nobody can understand you. You try to ask where stuff is in the store, they're all either Haitian or some North African immigrant, which again, I'm a big, huge fan of immigration as long as it's legal. And I know that these people are coming through a backdoor uh, process through the, uh, through the what's it called, the um, refugee program. So they're not true immigrants. What they are is they're people trying to come and take advantage. And so if you go to Silverthorne and you look at all the stores there, the retail stores that are the low entry stores, they're all being filled with those people, right? Which that's fine, as long as those people come legally. The problem is, is they're now supplanting the jobs of people who live there. People who have lived there for a long time, they can't get a job at the Walmart there because the Walmart only hires the people that just came because they'll take less money and they ask less questions and they'll work longer hours. They don't care, they'll get the overtime and they don't mind and they'll work the hours. But people here are like, no, you're not gonna make me do that. I'm not gonna do this. And so there's people that are willing to, to stand up for their own rights as a worker. Right. So you have Walmart taking advantage of that because they know that these immigrants aren't going to do anything about that. They're not going to stand up for their rights. They're going to they're going to just say, well, whatever, that's fine. And take like the lower pay. Right. Take the lower pay or take the the lower positions. And it's a game. It's a game that they know that they're playing because they know that they can if they can supplant enough of the entry level positions in America with immigrant labor that you take jobs away from the children and the lower class individuals who live in America who need those jobs. And they know exactly what, they do, what they're doing. They know that that's part of their game and part of their platform. That's why they bring them in, so that they can try the to push that. Is, though, the end that. result is to create A, less jobs available for us American citizens, and B, a change in our voting demographic so that we get to the point of having a Democrat voting de demographic in every state, regardless of whether or not that state is a conservative stronghold. Colorado is absolutely a conservative stronghold. The problem is because marijuana is legal here, which I support, they there's been tons of Democrats that have moved to the cities. Then those Democrats during COVID realized how nice the mountains were. And so now they've been slowly progressing into the mountains, trying to take over things there. So there's, there's definitely a problem there's not so much that I personally know to do because I'm not as well educated as, you know, say an economist, but I know that part of the problem means taking people that are here illegally or that have violated the rules and did not go to the first country that they came upon and requested refugee status, get rid of every single one of those people. Start from scratch and start a process by which individuals who are already here can become American citizens if it can be proven that those individuals have not received benefits in the past. If you received benefits, you need to get out because you came here without having to put anything in the system and you took from the system. So you became a net negative on the system. So you got to go. If you were a net positive, if you came here and started a business, it's a case by case basis, I think. And then you would actually see some real movement of, of support from the general mass of Trump supporters for immigration. Right now, they're just no. They want to shut the, the border altogether because we need to stop the bleeding. I get it. But that's not the solution, in my opinion. My opinion, the solution is to make it easier oh, to wait, become an American citizen. Yeah. See you, Doug. Well, thank you for speaking with us, Carlos. Does anybody else have any questions? Nope. We're on a time constraint. We're going to take off. Have Thanks fun, to meet guys. you, Carlos. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, man.
We're, we're just about to talk to you if you if you guys are okay with it. Okay. All right. No thanks. But we don't need. We're gonna talk to them first. And keep talking to them because they're retired teachers. They're retired teachers. Yeah, you can. You're sitting there. You're standing in where you're not supposed to be standing. And you're doing it during the national anthem. You should be standing All right. That's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope you guys found it at least entertaining, if not informative. You know, I think Aurora is surprisingly such a big part of this election, and because the issue of immigration is probably the biggest thing in this election that we've noticed at the front page. It's probably the hottest issue, the most discussed. It's what Trump talked about during his entire speech, pretty much. Um, so we found it very interesting that he came to Aurora. That's about it. We have more content coming out soon. I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to. You don't have to. I mean, you should, but like, you don't have to.